Hello, my name is Jackie and I am a Live Life Aberdeenshire librarian. Welcome to our Behind the Scenes with Click and Collect conversation, where you will find out about the service and how the library team managed to make this run so smoothly to enable our customers to access books in a very different but safe way. Today, I will be speaking with Jacqueline, who prior to lockdown was our Information, Literacy and Learning librarian based at Library Headquarters in Old Meldrum. Jacqueline is now heavily involved in managing our Click and Collect service and her title in this role is Family Lead. So Jacqueline, welcome to our Click and Collect behind the scenes conversation. Can you start by telling us what your role and involvement is with Click and Collect? Hi Jackie and thank you for inviting me along today. Um, yes, I'm one of the management support team or another title is family lead for the Click and Collect service. And this term came about um, back in the beginning when we allocated members of staff into work families and this was in case an individual <coughs> contracted um, COVID and then only a small group of, of staff would need to self-isolate as opposed to the whole building. The work families um, were around five people um, who only worked part of the day and there was two halves of a work family who kept separate from each other. So we had fewer people in headquarters, but the two halves of the work family covered the whole day and into the evening. So a very different working environment um, from the way that we normally work. I, if I can remember being back that first day in the building um, and just seeing my, my lovely library colleagues or my new work family and I don't know if we stopped smiling that whole day or if we stopped smiling the whole week because we were just all delighted to be to be back in the building. Um, my colleagues and I had all been redeployed doing other tasks such as the coronavirus helpline or working in care homes and providing activities for for residents. So we were so delighted to be back and being able to work with books again and with our library colleagues. I know I've really missed my colleagues and it must have been great being back to normal, well in a normal workplace environment as normal as what it can be um, at the moment. However I'm sure it couldn't have been easy returning to headquarters as you wouldn't have been able to have the same interaction with each other as you did before. Can you tell me a bit about that? No, you're you're right. We did have to come up with new working practices, and in fact, we we develop things all the time. So, um, if something um isn't working just the way it should be, then we're we're monitoring and developing things um all the time. And um, we definitely can't work in the way that we we used to, um, and doing the the many different tasks that we used to do before. As you know, in headquarters, we had different departments and each department would have a specific set of tasks that they would they would work on. So, for instance, we had a YPS department, our young people services department, and they would deal only with um, the books and the for children. Um, we would have a circulations department and they would deal only with books for, for adults. However, in this time, we have just this work family and we're working across the whole of of each of the departments, the whole building. Um, so, yeah, that's really how, how we're working now. And I have to say that our staff have been so amazing because they've just taken everything in their stride. Um, in the morning, we have a work huddle and we allocate tasks in the morning. So we'll say these are the tasks that have to be done and we make sure that everybody is getting the opportunity to do all tasks so that the staff feel comfortable and confident that they're able to um, do these new tasks. We make sure that they work alongside somebody who's maybe a bit more um, experienced doing that. So our staff have, their skills have increased um, hugely and they've done really, really well. Um, another thing we've done in headquarters is we've set up a one-way system and we allocate individual members of staff, or we did in the beginning, an, an area of stock that 
that they had to deal with. Um, and people were sitting at different desks so that we could keep everybody apart because generally we would have sat in departments or several people in, in an office. But everybody had to have their own individual office or an area that only they worked in, just trying to keep everybody safe, um, really. Um, I was allocated initially to work in the local studies department and not at my normal desk. Um, and it was really strange being back in the building because you were just so aware of people walking around the building that you wouldn't have been aware of um, before. Because if you walked out your building, uh, walked out your building, if you walked out your office and um, almost bumped into somebody you know no big deal before but but now we're just like oh sorry you know we're keeping apart for people and wearing masks and everything just try to keep everybody safe so from what you've you've said there it sounds like maybe i wouldn't recognize the headquarters layout now then I don't think you would because it is so tidy now. <laughs> Not that we were very untidy before, but we, we had to do a lot of tidying up. Oh dear. So then for not-so-tidy colleagues, maybe like someone like myself, we would really need to ensure our desks were tidy every day. Oh, Jings, help. <laughs> well, all desks were cleared and that was uh, one of the, the tasks that we had to do um, is we had to make sure that all desks had you know nothing on them because we have to clean them multiple times a day so as you're doing any tasks um you're cleaning down your your work surface um continually a bit like you are at home and um, you're just making sure that that everything is is clean um in headquarters um we we were a support function but now we operate as a branch um a part of the time so we were aware that there was going to be lots of stock coming back, so we had to weed the this, this stock that we had on ourselves so that there was space for the, the items that were going to be coming back. Um, but once we started Click and Collect, one of my favourite jobs to do and the task that I kind of allocate myself is to <laughs> choose stock for a book bundle for an individual. Um, you know, I people think as a librarian oh you must love working with books every day and as information literacy and learning librarian no i didn't work with books every day but as part of click and collect i get to browse the shelves picking books for other people so it's it is a lovely part of the um of the click and collect system Oh, that sounds bliss. That's one of the things I really miss about being in headquarters. Often when I was actually just walking to the tea room, a, a book will just catch my eye and I could just week it off the shelf, which I can't do that now. So I really miss that. Yes. Um, I think, you know, from what I've heard, our borrowers really enjoy the the aspect of um, click and collect too, that um, they'll maybe get to try authors that they've never tried before um, and the and they'll read books that they wouldn't have picked for themselves but mm -hmm. they've been picked by somebody else and they go oh, I'll give it a go and they're like oh that's a different author or a different um, type of book that I wouldn't normally have picked up um, so no it's it's um, great one, one of the next favourite tasks is to hand out the book bundles so when you actually see the the, the customer or borrower come in their car um, and in the early days myself and Colin one of the drivers who used to be the policeman we would often be in the the loading bay together and um, handing them out and um, it was it was quite funny because he would you know he had an authoritative way of directing traffic <laughs> and he would just point people as to which way to go and they would just follow and I was like oh I can do this and I would stand and I would point people and it just caused chaos so we went back to I would hand out the books and he would point people in the direction uh -huh. so yeah it was um yeah, we play, we play to our strengths, Jacqueline. That's what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah we play it to your yeah. strength. We we definitely do. Yeah. Uh, so if I can take you back to last summer, which seems such a long time ago, which branch started Click and Collect first? So we started on the fifteenth of July, um, in headquarters, and then a week later, Bankery and Fraserburgh started, and then a week after that, on the twenty ninth of July, Ellen and Stonehaven. Um, began providing a click and collect service. So we just had the five locations for 
um, for a few weeks and you know my memory is not great I can't remember how many weeks it was um, but we just worked with the stock that we had in the branches so I mean luckily in headquarters um, we had you know a huge stock um, for people to, to select from but normally we would move our stock around to mm -hmm. the various libraries course, and we weren't yeah. able to do that so if you were a Peterhead borrower, um, not a Peterhead borrower, a Bankery borrower, you could only um, select stock from Bankery because we weren't able to move stock around mm -hmm. um, in the same way. Um, so sometimes we had borrowers come from Bankery, Fraserburgh, um, or Ellen or Stonehaven. To, they came and booked a slot in headquarters if they wanted a book particularly um, from us. Um, it, it did feel like a milestone once we were able to move stock between the locations again. But, you know, safety is really paramount and we had to um, think about, you know, moving stock around. You know, we're aware of um, how long the virus lasts on various surfaces. So we looked into using things like closed plastic boxes instead of the open crates so that the stock was moving in a very safe environment. Um, and, you know, thinking back at the time, we were so ultra con uh, uh, cautious mm -hmm. that we made sure that we were keeping everything just so very safe. Mm -hmm. um, we, we now are back to using crates again, but we use things like COVID guard on the um, on the touch points on the crates and we make sure that the stock is all cleaned and we quarantine it and things. So we, we, we do make sure that, that everything is kept as safe as possible for the staff and also for um, the members of the public who will be, be using it. Um, yeah, mm. it's it's... It's been a, an interesting time, shall yeah. we say. Yeah, lots of things that probably people didn't think of that you know we had to do. Um, and like myself, because I haven't been involved in it, so it is really interesting to hear about what goes on behind the scenes. But one of the things I wanted to know was, why didn't every branch start at the same time? Was there a reason for that? Yeah, we, co we couldn't start every um, branch up at exactly the same time because there was a lot to be put in place um, before. We also, you know, in headquarters, we would normally support every branch, but we were a branch as well. So the, the amount of time that we could do the normal support function was greatly reduced. So, you know, branches had to take on a lot of... Um, perhaps the tasks that the headquarters would have done before. Um, each location also had to work out risk assessments, um, had to get PPE delivered, um, things like face shields and gloves and um, aprons that branch staff wouldn't have used before, um, they now needed to get. We also use things like Microsoft Teams for communication, um, training materials, allocating shifts, allocating tasks, recording new procedures. It was a huge learning curve for staff and, and they had to get um, trained up in, in all these functions before they were able to provide the click and collect service um, within their location. But I don't think we could have provided it without, um, or we can provide the service without Microsoft Teams because it's been so useful for keeping everybody informed with procedures and updates and decisions. Yeah, that sounds, um, sounds as yeah, you say, it's been a, a lot, a huge learning curve for staff. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking as well, were you talking about everything that they had to learn? Those staff had been working on the phone lines and in care homes and things like that. So I suppose it was finding the right time to bring people off and then get the time to train them up. All of that had to be considered as well. It's a huge exercise. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, we we also had to keep staff up to date with decisions that were being made on a daily basis and sometimes hourly basis. Um, I don't know if I ever got down to minute by minute basis, but, <laughs> but you know, we, we, we did have procedures and 
um, that we had to sort of update and keep updating. And, and we still are making sure that we're just working with the best efficiency with the staff that we have um, in the best possible way. That sounds really good. So the staff that came back from the care homes and things like that, do they take a wee bit of time you know, to before they were able to get out there in the branch? I suppose that's really what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that was the other reason we couldn't stand every branch up um, at the same time, because we had to wait for staff to come back from their redeployed um, roles. And, and some of our staff are still in care homes providing activities um, and helping to clean to allow the, the regular staff to provide things like personal care for the residents. Um, since the vaccine centres have started, we have some of our staff working there to provide support. They're helping clean the vaccine centre, direct traffic. I mean, I could be in there with my, you know, <laughs> causing chaos. I could be, um, but they, they haven't asked me, Jackie. I don't know why. I don't know um, why either. <laughs> <laughs> but they're directing traffic and helping people that are coming for their vaccine. Um, and, uh, you know, the one thing I can just say, I'm so proud of our staff who've stepped up and are providing support support during the pandemic. Um, there's been a lot of difficult tasks, but they've just got on with it and they've taken every job in their stride. And it's just heartwarming to see. Yeah, I know. I'm super proud of them all as well. And I feel that I'm working from home all the time, um, which is great. And I love the, the, the role that I've got, but they're doing such a, a great job out there. So anyway, back to Click and Collect. <laughs> how did people get their books? Because that's one of the things as well I know other people will be interested in. Um, how did people get their books? Because they weren't allowed into the building. Did they just phone up or what did they have to do in order to get the books that they wanted? Um, we use a system called Simply Book Me, which allows um, borrowers to book their own 15 minute slot or to get a book bundle or to return books. They now can also get um, hearing aid batteries. They can get food waste, um, green dog walker bags. Um, there's all sorts of things, but battery bags as well. Um, and, you know, with all these new things coming on, when you're making up a bundle, you have to remember um, all, all of these things. Um, People can do it themselves, but we are aware that not everybody is able to book their own slot and not everybody has the internet at home. Um, so some of our staff are manning phone lines and take calls and book slots on behalf of people. So if you want, if your listeners want to phone their local library, it all goes through to the same um, group of people who are waiting for their call and are able to help them. Um, we're not allowed to. Um, or we are not allowing people into our libraries um, at the moment to pick their own books. So we ask that customers stay in their car and start the staff pop the books in their boot or their back seat. Just again, keeping everybody safe and um, just making sure that there's um, you know social distancing is going on. Um, I've heard we've had some lovely comments about how safe our borrowers feel when coming to pick up their books. Did you say you've collated some of the comments, Jackie? Yes, I have. And that actually this this conversation that we are having is embedded in a presentation that people will be able to they scroll down, they'll be able to read all the lovely comments um, that we've received. And it is I just when I was reading them all, I just think it's great. The positive feedback. People are just so appreciative. It's just lovely. And it must just give everyone involved such a boost to know that uh, customers appreciate it. Oh, definitely. I've worked in the library before working in headquarters, but many of our colleagues um, haven't had any interaction with members of the public before in, in their library work. And it's all new to them mm -hmm. to get an understanding of how much people appreciate the service. One thing that's been lovely for the library staff is getting some lovely notes from borrowers who appreciated the service that we're providing. I know I've heard I've heard of that some people getting some wee notes back but of course it must be quite different for them if you think about it taking on a frontline role meeting customers face to face if they've never done that before the customers would really appreciate to have that contact even if it is with a different library team. Mm -hmm. Oh Love Life Aberdeenshire readers have really missed coming into their library during the first lockdown and have been so kind to take time to write notes and provide lovely feedback. And I'm, I'm really glad that my colleagues are able to read the notes of thanks because we, 
we don't normally get that feedback on the service that we're providing because we're we're one step away whereas now we're we're immediately getting that feedback i know you're right at the coal face now uh, the headquarters mm-hmm. team so how did you safely deal with the books that's the other thing i'm sure people are, are wondering so when people return the books um how do you deal with them because i know how i am when my post comes through the door you know i, I get the post i pick it up i clean my hands and if i've laid it down in the sideboard at the front door i then wipe that surface and then i rip open my letter, put the envelope in the the recycling bin, then I wipe my hands again. So what happens with the books when they come back? What do you do with them? Um, We quarantine the books for three clear days. So often people say, oh, I've put back my books, but they're still on my account. But that's the reason why. Um, They're sitting in our loading bay or in one of our libraries just quarantining until we're able to deal with them safely. Um, Every library has their own system of keeping track of what's come back each day. In headquarters, we have a trolley for each day when we're operating click and collect. So for instance, everything that comes back on a Monday is placed on a trolley and is left until Friday when we're able to deal with the stock. And this can be books from borrowers, it can be stock from branches, kits from schools, memory boxes from community groups, or even donations from people who had bought books during the lockdown and they've very kindly donated them to the library service. But I'd really like to reassure our, our, our your listeners that there will be a three day period when your books will have been returned but still on their account. And in fact from December there'll have been a three month period where <laughs> the books will still be sitting on on their account. But if an item is still on their account maybe a week later I would get in touch so that we can investigate that because mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, things do get put back on the shelf without being returned properly. So, yeah, you know, if you're at all concerned, then please do get in touch and, and we'll investigate. And of course, some people can get in touch by either sending um, an email or going to our live chat or picking up the phone or anything like that. So there's various ways for people to get in touch. But you must be really pleased to be back offering the Click and Collect service again. We we really are. We're just so delighted to be back in the building and we've picked up exactly where we left off before Christmas. Although my colleagues and I that are, are also family leads, we're all thinking, what did we do again before Christmas? But no, we, we have um, picked up again very, very easily. I know, it's and the so library long ago. Ago. I know, it was such a long time ago. Library slots are filling up, so... We hope to see some of your listeners soon. Uh, that's what we like to hear. That's fantastic. Well, all it leaves me to say is thank you, Jacqueline, for speaking to me today. It's been great getting an insight into behind the scenes of Click and Collect. Thank you for inviting me. You're very welcome.